Hi, welcome to the Results Rules OK podcast. And in keeping with our pattern of inviting interesting uh, entrepreneurs and business people to be uh, interviewed and, and recorded, uh, pleasure today to uh, welcome uh, Virginie Boyard and Gerard Sinez to the podcast. And we're talking about uh, Vistin, we're talking about HR and HR support services, because in Luxembourg in 2015, uh, Vistin was created following your 20 years independent exclusive experience in HR, uh, now providing HR services, outsourced HR services to the big guys, big corporates, but also the SME companies as well. Uh, so really interesting times now for COVID and lockdown for all of us, I think. But uh, I think in HR services now, it is a very interesting, unique time, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't recall anything like this over the last 25 years that I've been working in this sector. So um, a really interesting time, lots of new challenges, lots of new topics as well emerging from this crisis. Yeah, unprecedented. I think I know I speak to people in their uh, kitchens, their bathrooms, their bedrooms, wherever the Wi Fi is strongest. It's a very, very unusual time. But also, I think pe pe companies have had to adapt, and uh, a new word we've used now is pivot and make dramatic, dramatic changes as well. But you guys must have seen a lot of this in, in what you do running your own business, but also in Luxembourg in this sector as well. So it's, uh, and it's not over yet, is it? It's going to be with us for a long time, I think, by the sound of it. Sounds like, yes. It is, but never mind. Okay. So so I run a company in Luxembourg. Let's just say I have 50 people working in my company. Uh, why do I need to outsource my HR services to you guys? Why don't I just do it myself and uh, you know check on Google and do Facebook and make it up myself? Well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might be the answer. <laughs> They, unless HR is your core business, it can be a real challenge to manage all aspects of human resources um, yourself. And it can be a little bit risky too if you make any mistake. It can mm -hmm. cost a lot of money. The regulation evolved quite quickly as, you, as we've seen over the last six months. Yeah. Um, there may be also a lot of administrative work involved um, sometimes. So that takes a lot of time. And there are many different uh, topics to look at, mm -hmm. many things that you need to understand. For example, you know, how do you make sure that you pay your people properly? Yeah. Uh, how do you create an environment where people feel comfortable working, where they feel engaged, and where they are going to give their best? Mm -hmm. How do you manage performance issues? How do you manage behavior issues? How do you understand the, the subsidies that you can benefit from, you know, especially in the last six months, the state in Luxembourg has put in place a lot of different mechanisms to support companies. Mm -hmm. so it's important that you understand all this uh, in order to benefit from it. Uh, so there's a lot of things that falls on the CEO's shoulders, unfortunately, yeah. and these are the main reason why they, uh, they call us for some support. But but HR is it's a very broad area, isn't it? This is you know it, it, there was a quite a narrow image, I think, in the old days of HR or personnel, as it was called. But HR now, as you explain, is more about the the structure, the framework, the motivation, the the whole leadership framework that goes alongside and within the uh, the HR system. And I, I speak to you know CEOs, and I remember speaking to this to, to a guy, and he was in the UK. It's some months ago now. And I said, well, you know, how do you how do you motivate and inspire your people? And he said, well, I'll just pay them at the end of the month, and that's it. And it's like, well. Those days have gone, I think, you know, those days of just paying people and hoping for the best have certainly gone now. So, but you must see this a lot, I would have thought. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think on all the examples, you know, that Vizli just uh, uh, mentioned, uh, which are very concrete, tangible, day-to-day -day mm. things that, that can happen. You know, one of the big advantages of, of uh, for an SME to work with us, to outsource their full, their full HR is, is Precisely because it is a very complete and uh, complex topic. There's so many aspects to it, and um, uh, you know, whilst we are really good at managing their, all their operational part, giving them compliance, you know, giving them peace of mind on all of those uh, things, what we really bring to them is the best practice. So we help them implement policies and and, and HR concepts uh, that help facilitate and promote engagement, employee engagement. You know, an employee engagement at the end of the day is what makes the difference between a company outperforming their competitors or being outperformed by their competitors. So there is, there is, it has a huge impact. And, and you know, you match companies as for about 50 
uh, employees and so well that's exactly where 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 this really starts to matter and make a difference I think I think one of them and doing what I do is what well, I see this where companies organizations in the SME sector and otherwise but they do need to realize and some have that they are in the it doesn't matter what business they're in they're in the customer service business that's that's the business they're in and that depends on their people their team delivering a great product a great service being cohesive and I think there is this you know competitive advantage is available through great leadership policies procedures that support the whole uh, ethos and culture of the business i would have thought as well so and is that something just have you seen that um taking hold now do people get that do you think do they actually understand that you know people are are important it used to be that people are our best asset that was always the old cliche but nobody knew what it meant but is that changing now where people are understanding that actually the way they lead and motivate manage and support their teams is fundamentally critical now Yes, I no, think so. Yeah, yeah. No, we see we see that with, with multiple customers that they start to get really that awareness. I think you know in the HR community we, we have we've spoken over decades to ourselves and convincing ourselves you know that we're important. Uh, I think that 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 flow of communication has started to shift uh, towards the sea levels and, yes. has, and 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 this, this awareness is is building up that actually people make a difference. It's not just contributing to the talk, but it's walking the talk. Yes. And I'm just giving two examples. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every, every aspect of HR management, operational or conceptual, has an impact on engagement. It can have a negative impact, it can be just neutral, or it can have really a positive impact. Mm -hmm. And if you look at you know, the, the two most important examples is, how do I reward people? I can do so much wrong. Everybody mm -hmm. is their people, yeah, but I can do so much wrong that it really doesn't help engagement. Well, the other one is how do I manage performance? Uh, most people today know about performance management, some form of performance management, yeah. but of all those types of performance management, there's only maybe one or two ways to get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 90% of, of companies actually do more harm than good uh, in the way they manage performance. Yeah? Absolutely. Uh, so so that's, that's the kind of things that really, really impact uh, companies. And those now that have been worked with us, working with us since... Uh, a number of years, mm. they really see the difference in how their business performs. Yes, okay. I think I think it has become surely. I mean, again, doing what I do, I see this where I think from a CEO perspective, certainly in the SME sector, they they're so busy doing with you know, dealing with clients and customers and product and innovation, they haven't got time to to focus on big experts on everything and this outsourcing of you know skills and technical and and you know for for HR services as well. I think it's almost a it's like a must really because if you know if they want to focus on clients and customers and and service to them they've got to have a backup team to go with them so i would have thought they could work the way around it i was being slightly facetious when i said why do i need you i mean i i get it it's okay but i see this a lot. i see i see this a lot i do see it a lot and i understand that you did um a survey a recent survey in luxembourg an employee um survey in luxembourg with the employees and companies um what, what happened what were the major findings this you know during this bizarre covid lockdown times but on that survey what came out of that were the top uh, top learnings yeah uh we actually did an engagement survey you know, this this word engagement keeps coming back yes um, uh, it, it was a full-blown engagement survey which we launched during lockdown. Um, uh, you know, one of the main reasons were also, you know, every company was impacted, was going through uncertainty, so did we. Yeah? Uh, we, we, we did something to stay in touch with companies, and so we offered that uh, engagement survey, and we were actually very, very uh, pleased with the overall results. We had you know, more than 20 companies, more than 2,600 people who wow. participated in the survey. Yeah. Uh, and and we 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 could you know generate the reports back to the companies which are of huge value for them to understand where do we need to put our emphasis on. Sure. Uh, and in addition to that engagement aspect, of course, we looked at how did companies manage the mm -hmm. lockdown period and what matters to their people looking forward. Um, uh, so in terms of findings, key findings. Uh, number one was we were positively surprised about how high engagement was right, good. amongst, amongst uh, companies in general. Yeah. Uh, you know, we didn't have a single participant with a low engagement score. They all had 
middle high to very high engagement scores actually. That's really good. Uh, maybe maybe linked to the fact that you know, the survey was run over the months, so mid mid June to end August, so it was just getting out of the the lockdown. Um, and uh, you know, one of the most positive aspects in it was how people appreciated mm -hmm. how quickly and how well their employers reacted to the lockdown. Really? Okay. Well, that's encouraging. Yeah. That's good. It's encouraging, though, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, that was that was that was a, a, a very important aspect, and which which yeah helped throughout the survey. And there were some other uh, points though, that that came out uh, uh, out of the survey that. that almost across the board, uh, you know, communication. Yeah. Was extremely important at that time. And companies were forced into communicating with their people on terms of, you know, what are we doing next? Uh, you, you know, you stay at home. Uh, how do you work? How, how do we exchange it? So there was a lot of communication going on. And so we saw that overall, the, the results of communication was very positive mm -hmm. with one exception. Okay. And, and the exception was that, uh, and that was because of the uncertainty, People want to have more information about how is our company dealing with this? How are we oh, impacted by the wow. crisis? And also how are our customers impacted? Yes, okay. They, they felt that they didn't get enough communication uh, on, on, on that side. Yeah? Right. Um, and was that just out of interest that because it was that the one because they're working likely more remotely, maybe at home more flexibly, because they were outside of the office environment, they wanted some more information. I think you can't pick these things up at the coffee machine or the water cooler. Informal conversations are gone. Was it maybe to do with that perhaps as well? Absolutely. You, yeah. you don't realize how much information you can get just from you know walking in, in the office and talking yeah. uh, to your colleagues on a day-to-day -day basis. So this type of information uh, needs to be brought to the employees when they work remotely. And this yeah. uh, this is one of the key challenges actually brought by the lockdown situation. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Okay. But it's, 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 it's all, yeah, communication. I, I get it. I understand. Okay. Yeah. And, any other key key points that uh, that came through? Uh, yeah. For example, on the, um, uh, when, when we asked the question we asked about looking forward, hmm. um, that, that's, that's the part where there was the most uncertainty among people on the one side because they didn't have the information on how well their employer coped. They, they expressed the uncertainty about what, what does it mean for my variable remuneration for my bonus next year. Right, of course, yes. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> uh, good question, we, good point. Yeah, and after talking to, to you know, of course, we've, we've been a lot in touch with those companies. Some of them did very well during that period. Sure. So there's no reason to be to feel uncertainty about it, but people did, lack of communication on that side, yeah. Um, or the, the also an, another aspect, which, I and mean, we've seen that in 2008 in the crisis as mm -hmm. well. What are companies doing when we face a crisis? We stop managing performance. Yes, yeah. It, it, it's, it's contradictory because, you know, it's, it's exactly that time where performance matters most. Absolutely. And companies have a reaction of stopping management performance. So mm -hmm. people weren't really sure what are my objectives what is expected of me for the next six months of 2021. Yeah, so of that's that's an aspect where we saw the companies need to do some, some effort in, mm. uh, because that start stabilizes people again and, and, and makes sure performance overall continues well. Yes, okay. 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 And and looking at the you know, the uh, this this situation we're in, we're in lockdown 2.0 right now. We've just had the you know, the U.S. election, which I sense is not over yet. Actually, <laughs> it seems to be rumbling on. But anyway, you know, big political change in the U.S. We've got Brexit from the U.K. coming up end of December this year. We've got COVID. We've got all sorts of things going on. Um, a lot of uncertainty out there, which there always has been in business, to be fair. But it seems to be sort of amplified right now. I mean, what? For, from an employer point of view and the other people you're dealing with what are the what are the what are employers what's the biggest challenges facing employers right now God, there are many challenges mm. uh, uh but the key ones have been very well highlighted by the, the survey that gerard has just yeah. mentioned it's really much about in luxembourg adjusting to the new environment adjusting to remote uh, teleworking mm -hmm. Uh, making sure that the HR practices are aligned with this new reality. Absolutely. Uh, you know, working times doesn't matter anymore. Working places do not matter anymore. Yes. <laughs> uh, leadership is also something, you know, that really needs to change and yeah. the practice need to evolve mm -hmm. 
in order to make sure that managers know how to manage remote teams. Yes. And that's quite different from what we, we used to. Yeah. Uh, communication, as we have just mentioned, it's also to become broader uh, and quite more often than, than we used to. Mm -hmm. And the key challenge as we now reaching the end of the year mm -hmm. is the uh, performance review and the appraisal, as we call it. Of course, it. yeah, exactly. So, yes. <laughs> you know, people wonder how they are going to be assessed as they are have worked yeah. uh, remotely most of the year and managers also are very stressed about it. Of course. They're not, yeah. not quite sure how to assess the people performance. They're not quite sure how to address any performance issues. Um, this is all becoming much more complex than it used to be. So Absolutely. these are the things that are going to hit uh, us again next year. And uh, these are the topics that companies need to uh, really work on how do we become more flexible how mm -hmm. do we become more agile and how do we become better uh, leaders i think that it's for me and i've seen this again obviously speaking with you guys as well that some of these key phrases that were thrown around maybe 12 months ago things like flexibility creativity agility leadership it didn't actually matter because everybody came to the office every day and you could do what you like but now you know managers have got to become leaders haven't they they have to lead their team now we've got to be agile we've got to adapt and pivot and change and grow and it's all, all just my observation it seems to become very real all of a sudden and a lot of people are struggling with it and, and rightly so because they, they haven't had to do this before so all these little phrases and things that were you know, in the textbooks um I, rem I remember speaking with somebody i think it was january up in lux and uh, we were talking about you know is it possible to have flexibility and, and sort of some degree of home working in the organization and she said no it's impossible because technology rules regulations legislation restrictions and blah 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 cross border this and all that sort of thing impossible i think by, by i think march the 16th <laughs> everyone was at home working and so what was impossible in January became implemented in, in in March and and has now continued on so I think you're absolutely right I think this management development HR policy leadership you know remuneration motivation it's a completely different ball game now I think pretty much but but you've seen this with the, with the clients have they adapted when the people you work with have adapted well because they've got you in their in their corner I'm sure but mm -hmm. uh, they, <laughs> it's continuing isn't it I mean, this is not going to end now because next year is going to be different again I would have thought yeah I mean uh, as you said you know on, on, on mid-march Teleworking was implemented over a weekend. That's exactly, exactly. And it worked. The impossible worked. became true, didn't it? It's unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> and it worked very well. Uh, and, and as any crisis, you know, some 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 degree of, of innovation, etc., gets forced by it. Yes. And it comes out naturally. But I mean, overall, we have to say that where companies struggled a bit was the teleworking. Is um, uh, yeah. is is this creativity innovation processes? Hmm that on, on, on work streams, they had plans to make them work via, you know, tools like we are chatting here. Uh, yeah. It's difficult to do brainstorming with uh, seven people in, a, in, in this type of, of chat environment. So there's, there were some restrictions there mm. uh, on this, but uh, I mean, it's, it's going definitely to be a challenge going forward uh, to have the right uh, working environments and have the flexibility uh, on teleworking uh, there. And, and by the way, it, it, by now, we have a new uh, collective labor, uh, like a framework agreement, say, on teleworking in Luxembourg. Right. Uh, it has been uh, in the previous version, I think it was dated 2006, wow. uh, along those lines, and now it has been updated, and it is, it is really quite good. It gives a lot of flexibility. It is, it is adjusted to what we need, and yes. probably we wouldn't have seen that change of legislation or agreement between unions and, and employer representatives yeah. if we hadn't had COVID. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. I mean, the, the thing we should have bought shares in Zoom, shouldn't we? About nine months ago, I think, by the look of it, we could have been uh, made some money out of it as well in order thought, but still. So, so in your opinion, because you know, you're involved in the, the whole Luxembourg was it, HR, this teleworking, remote working, flexible working, is it going to stay or, or even if, you know, hopefully COVID you know, disappears in the spring, let's say, I hope you're all being well, will, will this stay? Is this the new normal anyway? So are we going to be more flexible, more teleworking, homeworking, or will it go back to what it was before, do you think? 
Um, I think it will definitely stay, mm. not to the extent as in a normal lockdown and, sure. and, and where you're, you're afraid of cross-contamination uh, in your organization, etc. But, yeah. uh, uh, you know, people saw the advantages, employers saw that uh, it works pretty well. Uh, now, there were some limitations and it also came out of the survey. You know, some people, uh, they don't necessarily have the environment at home. Yeah, efficient in working. So on, on those type of questions, there were always you know, the, the vast majority of people said they were more efficient doing teleworking, and they really, okay. going, the vast majority is asking for more teleworking going forward than they had before the crisis. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when you when you dig into the, the the narrative questions, the open questions we asked, you you could read that people say, yeah, but not full time, please. Yes. Okay. Um, Yes. We want the mix, the, the, the social aspect is missing. Yes. Uh, some of the communication, as we said, has uh, is breaking down. Uh, so people would like to have some mix, but very likely we're going to see much more teleworking going forward than we had before mid of March this year. I think people, people got used to it, haven't they? Now they're, they're sort of used to working on a camera, on a screen and, and remote. But I think it's a really inter interesting point that you make that it's not all the time though. You know, maybe, I don't know, a couple of days a week or whatever it is, you know what the mix is gonna be, but there is that sociability, inclusivity, team and spirit element that, you know, we're, we're social creatures, I think, aren't we? We do need to hang out with other people from time to time, but it'd be interesting to see how the balance comes along um, in maybe the new year when it settles down to some sort of normal pattern, I would have thought. But um, very, very interesting, exciting times. So uh, we'll see what see what progresses. But uh, see what progresses. But you guys, I mean, you're working. Are you guys in your offices now? Or are you working from home yourself? This, this is home office for us. So we're working from home. Are you home or are you in the office? I'm at home. You're at home. And yeah. You? This this is this is the office. Some, somebody, the office. Has, somebody has to watch the phone and, and water the plants, etc. Well, your you, well, your home's full of boxes anyway. You've only recently moved in, haven't you? So it's still pa yeah. packing boxes all over the place. True. I, I, I'm probably currently of, of those who, who don't have the appropriate environment at home yet. <laughs> Get you a backdrop or something like that. <laughs> and there was also another interesting aspect of the, the teleworking experience to that extent is that, you know, uh, before we have, of course, and, and, and legitimately people complaining that they have one, one and a half, two hours commuting times. Yeah. But it had one advantage. You know, you on your way home, you switch off. Yeah. Yes. And what happened during teleworking? Well, people confronted you, they switched off their computer, they confronted their family right away, but the brain hadn't switched off yet. So um, uh, all, all that is also a pressure that that adds. So that's why people are asking, again, for more mix. I think there's this sort of balance, if that's the right term. And I see people that they're, they, they're working from home, and I'm guilty of this, and I'm sure you guys are a little bit as well, that when you're, when you're in your own business anyway, you tend to carry your, your phone with you. And if you're not very careful, it's on the table during dinner. And if something pops up, you are sort of responding to it. And that's, you know, okay, in entrepreneur world and business owner world, it goes with the territory a little bit, but not to be recommended. But that can't be allowed to happen for everybody in teams when they're with family and their cell phone you know dials up or phones or whatever it is they've got to have this this distance between office work and, and, and home has got to be there as well i would have thought as you say yeah uh, it's up to us to organize it actually this is a new practice we're not used to this at yeah. least in luxembourg this is very new mm -hmm. so it's up to us to really make sure that you know there is this differentiation when we need it yeah yeah i think having the we, we're sort of fortunate to a degree well yeah, very fortunate but we sort of lock the door in the office this office is separate and when the work time is finished we can lock it and that's it it's away uh, and we're done but for other people I mean I, I have spoken to people one guy is a CEO in Luxembourg I'm not going to say who he is but the only place he could get <laughs> get good wi-fi connection was in his daughter's bedroom and she's six so behind him he's got <laughs> so, you know there's, there's my little pony and there's and he sat there in, in as a CEO <laughs> having meetings and uh, that was quite unusual I think he's got the wi-fi fixed now um, but this was separation of home and work and balance it's a key a key key challenge for people as well but uh, okay so any other key points you I mean just for your going in terms of your experience that would be interesting for people to, to recognize or be careful of over the next you know, three or four months in this brave brave new world we're moving into I would say it's really about making all those new practices 
sustainable. Mm. So how are we going to organize everything that we've learned, everything that we had to implement you know, from one day to the other? Yeah. How are we going to transform this into sustainable HR practices that we can document and that we can you know, deploy in the company for good? Mm-hmm. Okay, I think yeah. one for me is I think people have been uh, uh, drinking too much wine in the evenings as well. So don't drink wine to compensate. Get some get some systems in place instead. It's probably a better, a better, safer strategy. I would have thought. All right. So um, well, good look, guys. Thank you for your time. It's fabulous to speak with you both. We had a hiccup at the start, which was all due to me in terms of recording and technology. This one seems to have worked. So really appreciate your time. Now, if I go back to the, the start of our sort of conversation, and I'm this uh, guy owning and running this 50 person uh, business in Luxembourg. Uh, as a consequence of this conversation, I've realized that I'm not gonna do it myself. I'm not gonna Google it. I'm not gonna make it up on the spot. I'm interested in meeting or speaking with you guys about what Vistim can do. What do I do? Who do I call? Who do I contact? How can anybody get in touch with you guys at Vistim? Well, if you, you know, if, if, as you described, if, if, you, if, if, you, if the awareness has raised that you think you know you can really make a difference to your business then you have already something that you share with our customers uh, so you, you, you can uh, the, the, the only next step then to do is uh, you know maybe visit our website uh, uh, or, or I, I don't know what well, we can we can uh, screen in our, our contact details but our website vistim sacom It'll be on the, the on the end the end screen of the uh, the conversation. It'll be on there as well. So yep, that's okay. fine. But through the website, absolutely. You have our phone numbers. You have our email addresses. Um, uh, we'll get back to you. We 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 are quite responsive. Uh, Perfect. I, I'll tell you, you, you guys don't bite. I can just have a you know, quick conversation and see uh, see what happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Fantastic. We can share a Zoom coffee. A Zoom coffee. There we go. This is new terminology, isn't it? A Zoom coffee. And uh, I just very separately, I'm sure anybody watching and listening won't uh, won't mind this. But I had a client in the UK, and they said to me, you know, visit the Zoom is great. We can have a coffee and a discussion. And she said, but you know, but we don't know what people are wearing when they're on these Zoom calls, do we? I said, well, we know what we're wearing on the top half. I had to stand up and prove I was fully clothed. <laughs> I, I am, uh, because she thought I might be in my sort of speedos or something under the desk, and I'm not. But this is part of the brave new world. So anybody listening, just relax. I think we're all fully clothed. We're all okay. Um, but uh, Virginie Girard, thank you for your time. It's been, I always learn from these conversations. It's been a real joy. Thank you. And anybody listening in, we're back next week with another conversation. Uh, please contact Virginie and Gerard for a conversation about HR services in Luxembourg and uh, have a Zoom coffee and a chat. But for now, thanks for your time, guys. Have a great Thank week you. and uh, I'll speak to you real soon. Bye for now. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.